Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and today we're going to be having a look at Frog's Transporter. Now, we have two variations of this truck. We have the one on the left, which is kind of more of a standard configuration, and then we have the one on the right, which is an 8x8 with axle lift. And so, we're going to be focusing on both of these, but I think I'll probably spend a little bit more time with the 8x8 variant in this video. And as you can see, it is unbranded so in theory it could be console friendly so that's the plan and we're gonna go ahead and walk through both of these trucks test them out give them a shot and see not only what kind of options they have but how they drive how capable they are and also there's a companion trailer pack to go with these trucks so with that being said they do have their own trailers that are designed to help you haul cargo throughout whatever campaign map scenario you're actually taking part in so let's go ahead and hop into the axle lift 8x8 right off the bat and fire it up. God, the size of that single stack is like massive. Absolutely huge. And let's see. So changing the suspension mode should, yep, go ahead and lower that lift axle down. So if you need a little bit of extra support for a really heavy load, that's your go-to right there. All right, so let's jump into the garage, and it actually comes with a sort of variable transmission right off the bat, which is actually pretty impressive. All right, let's go ahead and go into the customization. So we have the balanced engine, which gives you an A-minus power-to-weight rating, which is already pretty good. Then we have the logging engine, which is designed to work with the logging transmission and is an S-plus power-to-weight rating. And the logging version is basically your hauling or towing, basically your heavyweight variant. And then you have upgraded, which is also S-plus, but the power is delivered in a different way so we're going to go ahead and go with the logging configuration and as far as transmissions go we have the balanced highway logging and off-road now the logging one it says logging tune use in part with logging engine for hauling long logs through the yukon and such so basically once again a heavy haul tuned setup now we could use highway but i think for this test i'm going to go with the logging tune now suspension this is where it gets actually pretty interesting so we have stock High lift, lifted, and scout style. So scout style basically says, or at least the description of it, is that it can still tow, but the softer suspension is tuned to be a little bit more fun in case you do want to go scouting with a truck like this. I don't think a lot of people are going to necessarily want to go through, like, go scouting with this in the middle of nowhere, but if you want the option to do that, it's there. And I can already hear Diesel Addict in the background going, I would scout with it. And to be fair, there are probably a lot of people that would at least give that a try, and I hope you do because I think it would still be hilariously fun. But let's go ahead and go with the standard, well, yeah, let's go with the lifted suspension and see how that does. Now, we really only have one tire size, and that's 39. And it comes in with the generic off-road tire, but you can also go with the BFG MT or the studded generic off-road tire for your icy, snowy environments. Then you have the OHD 1, 2, and 3 if you prefer a more vanilla game style tire setup. And you also have the OHD 2 with chains, once again, if you prefer the chain tires to the studded tires. So let's go, let's go with the, I'm thinking actually the BFG MT. I think that looks really, really good. Now, winch-wise, you get one, and frame add-ons, this is where it gets crazy. So you have the heavy crane, log carrier, log carrier crane, flatbed, van body, like, maintenance frame. Basically, every single base game add-on that you could possibly, like, bruh, what? Custom U-Haul, okay, with freaking ramps, you could load something inside there, that's great. Custom sideboard hauler, that is sick. Bumper heavy, so basically if you're going to tow extra heavy loads, bumper, bumper wide load, bumper wide load weighted, bumper wide load ultra weighted, and then a custom cement mixer, because I think, I don't think anyone's ever actually put a cement mixer add-on in SnowRunner, so that's really, really cool. You've got sleeper stuff with Groot on the dash, apparently, and then that's going to be also your, like, repair parts, spare wheels, fuel tank, IM50 loading crane, saddle high, and saddle low. That's pretty much the entire, like, that's the entire upgrade list in terms of frame add-ons. And that is a bigger frame add-on list than anything I've ever seen. That is so much customization. So now we're going to go ahead and go to miscellaneous, which is tall beacon and then raised beacons, which I think we're good on beacons, but I'll do the tall beacon just because I can't even see what it looks like, but we'll see when we get outside the garage. Let's see, backwards trucking and, oh, okay. So you can kind of change up the uh, the sleeper stickers. I got you. I got you. So now, hood stickers. Once again, you've got the Deep Woods Trucking American Pride. I got you. And then window stickers. TNB modding window banner if you want to go with that. 
Door stickers, same once again, but I think they already have a Deep Woods Trucking sticker on, or Backwoods Trucking sticker on the door anyway, so that sticker would go over it, which is kind of weird. And then wheels-wise, you have Rim of Sorts, which, uh, that's the only option you get. And then, off to the colors department, that, oh, I see, so the default purple has the Deep Woods Trucking stickers on the door, but if you go to a standard color, it removes those and then gives you the option to add the other stickers yourself. That makes sense. So let's see. We could go with like a blue, we could go with a red. I know a lot of people are going to be like, dude, I swear if you go with a red again, I mean, <laughs> oh my god. I actually like this kind of light gray. That looks really, really good on this thing. Looks really, really good. I like the blue as well. The blue looks very good. Very good. I think I'm going to actually go with the gray. The gray, for whatever reason, I think just looks really good. And then, so we got bobbleheads, of course. Let's go ahead and throw beans on the dash because why not? And now, oh, I see the beacons up top now. All right, let's go ahead and leave the garage and see what we can do. Wow, that is like super glossy paint. Look at that. That is like mad shiny. That is mad shiny, dude. That is wild. Oh, back it up. Come on. Now, we're going to have to have enough room to actually put one of these trailers on because they're going to be pretty long. All right, let's back it up one more time. We'll stop it right there. All right, transporter enclosed, which is a four unit. And then you've got, let's see, where are they in here? Transporter log carrier, which is obviously, I'm sure that looks like it's going to be long logs. And then, let's see, transporter extension, which is sort of a gooseneck trailer that isn't included in any other gooseneck pack, I don't believe. That actually looks like, I wonder if that could be hauled by pretty much anything that has the ability to haul Red's Gooseneck trailers as well, or if that's only like a saddle low trailer, I'd be curious to find that out. And then let's see, transporter flatbed, I do dig that. And that's actually, what's interesting is these are not like super outlandish, like crazy long trailers like I thought they were gonna be. They're actually pretty freaking realistic. All right, let's stop right here. Oh, I forgot the other one with that. I forgot you were right there, buddy. Hold on, I'm sorry. I'm gonna move you real quick. All right, park you right there. And now we're going to go back to... Oh, wait. No, I said turn off. I was like, turn off! I guess I heard the other one, and I was like, oh, that's why. All right, so medium pipes, cabins, drilling spare parts, cargo containers, whatever the heck you could possibly want. That is so big for a single unit, by the way. So big for a single unit. God, that looks so right, though. That looks so right. Oh, my God, that looks so right. What's crazy is... What's crazy is the fact that, like, with cargo like this... It acts like it's not even there. Like, this is designed to haul stuff that is so much heavier than this. So much heavier. And with something like that, it barely even breaks a sweat, dude. It barely even breaks a sweat. But, like, look at it. It's such a good-looking setup. And what I love about it is the fact that, like, this... Again, this breaks new ground for SnowRunner, in my opinion. Because this brings a more highway-style semi-truck into a game that's all about off-road trucking, yet it gives you those off-road options. So if you do want to take it into some gnarly off-road scenarios, you could do that and it could still hold its own. So, God, what a cool-looking truck as well. What a cool-looking freaking truck. Cool-looking setup. Now, let's also go ahead and put that axle down. And, let, whoa! Okay, so that lifts it and also puts the axle down. Like when you go with the lifted suspension. That's really, really cool. I love that. All right, we're going to take a quick detour because we got to put this thing through its paces. Ain't that right, Beans? Oh, God. Wow, that's impressive. Dude, holy crap, that's impressive. Although, to be fair, you're also dealing with diff lock always on, so that's another thing you got to keep in mind. I think we may have gotten it stuck a little bit, but that was my fault for using high. Yeah, using high got me into a little bit of trouble there, but I'm all right with that. We're just trying to figure out the capabilities of this thing right now. Whoop. Jeez. It rips, though. I mean, it's very, very respectable in terms of performance. Very respectable. And I really do hope that it ends up coming to consoles. I would love to see this thing come to consoles because, again, this would add another unique dynamic to, like, a trucking lineup that doesn't really have a lot of vehicles like this, especially on consoles. We're going to throw it into low plus. Dude, it does a great job, though. It really does a great freaking job. Put that grip to use, buddy. Put that freaking grip to use. And actually, the center of gravity is pretty well managed, too. It didn't want to flop right over. Now, granted, I didn't go up on the steepest part, but, 
you know, I feel like if you were going through it in campaign mode, you wouldn't necessarily always risk the, the ultra steep part either. So let's change the time up real quick because I want to see what this thing looks like in a, on a nice, like, sunny day. And it looks freaking awesome. Looks so good. I'm going to take the back trail. I know I normally don't take this back trail, but I think it would be a really good way to test this thing out. And really, you know, with this version and the other version, I know that some people are going to be like, why aren't you driving the other version? And the other version, I mean, is really, in a lot of respects, the same truck, except it has, you know, one less axle, it's a little bit shorter, and obviously doesn't have the axle lift either. Now, going down this trail is going to actually represent what it's like to go down a lot of side trails in an area like, for example, the Wisconsin maps. Right? The Wisconsin maps are going to have a lot of areas like this. And if you're trying to work your way through those maps, especially, you know, in an objective-driven playstyle, this thing is absolutely going to rip. It's absolutely going to demolish that stuff for you. And the cool thing about it is, it was designed for objective-based gameplay. It was designed... I mean, you guys saw all those attachments. It was designed to literally do anything and everything you could possibly freaking need it to do. And my god, does it come through that with flying colors. It absolutely does. And I know this testing circuit has been a little bit different than the normal testing circuit we use, obviously because normally we do the hill climb test, the mudding test, and the dips obstacle. But this time, I like I said before, I wanted to put it through a little bit more of a practical obstacle, and or at least more of a practical testing circuit in relation to what you would normally see on a campaign map. But rest assured, we're still heading for that bridge jump. Let's be easy on through here. Easy. Not bad. Not freaking bad, dude. Not bad at all. And at the end of this trail, we're going to go ahead and turn right because you guys know exactly why we're turning right. We got to head to that bridge jump. Oh, man, we would have just like... If this was real, though, we would have just scuffed up that paint job really bad on that fallen log. It just like would have torn a freaking gash in the side of our rig. That would not have been a uh, that would not have been a fun trip to the body shop. That's for sure. All right, we're coming up to the end of the trail now, and we're gonna go ahead and get ready to make that right. And then we're gonna head down the bridge jump. And I know that once again there are so many different options and configurations for this truck that really in this video we haven't even scratched the surface of. But I love that because it gives this truck so much usability, so much reusability, and so much replayability. And you could use it in so many different scenarios, all the way from freaking role play to objective based to just like having fun with your friends really it gives you the option to do almost anything with it all right let's throw it back into automatic mode for now head on out oh boy oh boy and because we're heading for the bridge jump you guys already know what has to happen oh yeah all right gearbox high yup and let's see all right, so we got high range gearbox. We'll make it sunny outside again. Eight freaking gears, dude. Oh, dude, we're going to absolutely yeet ourselves off of this ramp. Absolutely freaking yeet ourselves off of it. We're going to have to use that interior cam too on the way down so the camera doesn't glitch out, but y'all knew that already. All right. Actually, it handles pretty freaking well. Easy to control going around the corners, even on pavement. Like, with these mud tires, they're still not bad on the pavement. Not the greatest, but also not the worst at all, by any means. All right. Whoop. Sending it. There's seventh. Come on. There's eighth. She's getting it off the ramp. Boom. Hey, we might have demolished the suspension, but we kept the cargo intact. Well, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you guys next time. Talk to you all later.